Do you want to edit photos like this one? This one? Perhaps this one? Or even this one? Well, if you do, you have came to the right place. In today's video, I will be showing you how I came about turning this photo into this photo. And then I will also be showing you how I managed to edit this photo in such a way that when I put it up on Instagram, it got over, shockingly, 1,000 likes. If you do want to improve your photography skills, you have came to the right tutorial. So sit back, guys, and watch how I turned these into something I am proud of. Hello everybody, I am Lewis, you are watching Lost in Travel and welcome on here to a brand new video. And on today's video, I am going to be doing my very first tutorial. Look at that, you can call me Professor Lewis from now on, as I'm now going to be teaching you some tutorials on how to edit photos for the gram. Well, over lockdown, I set up my very own travel Instagram account. Yay, finally, but five years too late. But better late than never, I guess, and I set it up in May, and I just, you know, just a place to post all my photos up, and I've grown a community. Can you believe it? Go check out my Instagram account, it is in the description below, where you can see all of the photos that I have been putting up in the process of what I'm going to be showing you guys today. Obviously this is my first tutorial, so thank you guys for trusting in me to help you along the way. If you do have any questions, don't be scared to fire them down below. I will get back to every single person. I also want you to tell me in the comments if you have came from my Instagram. I did ask you all in our Instagram story if you would like to see this video, how I edit my Instagram photos, and a lot of you said yes. There was a lot of people that answered that, so I was really chuffed about that, guys. Thank you so much. So, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, and this is your first time seeing me in video form, then guys, please drop a comment telling me your Instagram name, so I know who has been nice enough to watch this for me. If you don't see more tutorials from me on photo editing, or video editing, or other like tutorials on travel related stuff, or even actually going out and doing photography, then just let me know. And I will get to work on any of them. Really, I think the best, the key way to learn how to use editing softwares is tutorials do help out a lot and they do help if you're struggling, but I think the best way is just to dive right in there and just mess around with things and see if that helps. So, you're going to need two things if you're going to want to edit like me today. You're going to need Adobe Lightroom and you're going to need Adobe Photoshop. If you can only get one, Adobe Lightroom is preferred because that is the one that will really help you do all of the um, nice fancy popping out of the colours, the contrast and it's a really better way. But I'm going to be using Photoshop for a portion of this. When I come to doing my editing, I usually do about 80% of the photo in Lightroom, but 20% of it in Photoshop. I don't do that much in Photoshop. The links will be in the description for that below. Another thing I'll be going to be linking in the description for you guys getting started on this is a site called Preset Love. Beforehand, before I knew how to use Lightroom at all, I used to just go into presets, just use a scroll through my presets, I have loads of them, and just go, oh that one looks nice, click, export, boom. But now I've actually been trying to put a preset down and actually edit beyond the preset. I use the preset, it's like, I use it as like the blueprint. That the thing just gets the foundations of the photo, it gets it started and then I work harder on it. Obviously the final thing you'll need for doing this is you need a photo. So that could be of anything, of course you don't have the photos I'm going to be doing today. But if you do have any photos, you just take a photo of what's on your right hand side, why not? Uh, if you don't have any other photos there, if you have any old travel photos to reminisce over that beautiful time where we were all happier in our lives, then go ahead and put that on your computer and get it prepared. So anyways, let's jump right into Lightroom. So the first photo I'm going to be editing here today, today and that's going to be this one of Edinburgh Airport. I put this up on the Instagram on just, just, just several days ago and I was really pleased with how it turned out. I thought that I put a lot of work into this photo to try to make it pop. Because when you look at this photo, that, that's another tip for you guys by the way, I forgot to mention this, is when you come to taking photos, this is more of a photography tip, but do it in RAW. 
you can put a JPEG in this and edit it or PNG and edit it, but raw files are the best because it basically makes the raw footage more bland and that means that when you do get into the edit it, it's a lot more monotone and it means you can play around with it a lot more. So when you look at this photo right now, here in Adobe Lightroom, it doesn't look that nice and it doesn't, definitely doesn't look like the photo I put up on the gram a few days ago. Should we stop calling it the gram? It really makes me sound like a hipster. So let's start with the first step. If you are going to go and get your presets, what you do is, so download your presets from presetlove.com. They send out weekly free ones, so I'll always love doing that. I usually always go for the same ones, but it's nicer to just have a, some several ones there for backup. So here they all are, as you see, you just hover over the preset. So as you see, you can just hover over them. Aqua, Autumn Fields, Autumn Skies. Some of them don't turn out nice, there's some black and white ones. Oh, that's making it scary. An abandoned airport, the looks of things. And what you do is you just go through them all until you find the right one. I always wonder what the point in this one is, like, why is there some massive line? I've always been tempted to put a photo on my Instagram of that there, but I never ever use some of these. So I think I'm going to go for high def, that's a pretty good one. So click that, put it in, and voila, that's not all we're going to be doing, though that is all I would have used to do. But now, I go in here and you see all this stuff here, so right here is exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, whites, blacks, texture, clarity, dehaze, these are the ones I mainly deal with when I come to going a little bit further with my foes. But the one thing that I wasn't a very big fan of this photo was mainly that you can still see the fence. I wasn't a big fan of the the, uh, the bit of fence in there. So what I done was I came over here to transform this box and I decided to scale it. Not enough that it was out, just enough that it, the planes were a bit closer of Edinburgh Airport. There we go, that was a bit dandy. And what I then do, I think that this area is a bit too overexposed. I'm not a fan, you can't really read the easy jet sign on the plane there. But as you see in my developed photo, you can. So I'm going to teach you two things that I just learned recently in Lightroom. I'm still learning. It's the best thing about photo editing is there's always something new to learn. I've been learning to use these two recently. Graduated filter and the radial filter. So I'm going to show you what the radial filter does right now. So basically this is a way of editing just a portion of the photo so you don't have to when you change those scalers on the exposure of the contrast that's the whole photo but if you move them around with a radial filter or a graduated filter you can actually do a lot of good stuff with them where it's just a portion of the photo so let me just say i've done this for example i just make like a nice oval shape drag it over onto the planes right there and as you see that's making everything else get darker or lighter. I'll do that. And that's not really what I wanted to do. So in my mind, when you put something in a shape, it should be in the shape, not everything outside. So I prefer to click invert, which you'll find in this in the first box right there, right down underneath the feller icon. Boom invert. And that means everything inside the box is what you're editing. So are you the ones I usually always play with is like either exposure Texture, clarity, dehaze. These are the ones I usually go to. If they don't work out for what I want, then I move into contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. I always like moving around the texture and stuff that really does help. So exposure, of course, is for making it like light or dark. Getting the exposure away. So I want it to be a little bit dark in there. So just you'd have to go too crazy with it like that or like that. As you see, that's terrible. Just have to make it like that. There we go. All right. And then once I do that, the texture is always a nice thing to play around with. Texture. So I'm gonna make this like that. But when you change the clarity, there we go. I prefer the the more hard style textures. It's up to you. Sometimes I, I usually mess around with them. Those are the things I usually change in my niche, if that's what you call it. I usually always put them with the texture of clarity. Sometimes I like it hard, sometimes I like it soft. It's really 
uh, preference, but it really depends what foot I'm working on. So as you see there, and now I um, don't think I to use the graduated filter in this, but I will be using that in the next photo I do. Play around with the texture and clarity as much as you want, sometimes I love with dehaze. Quite nice, like that. That basically means it makes it darker or lighter in the terms of the sunshine. Voila. Okay, when you're happy with the photo you've done on Lightroom, because it's just a wee quick version, what you do is right click, go to export. All right, there we go. So. Some people often like to just do everything in Lightroom and then they'll move into Photoshop and do everything in Photoshop. But for the purpose of this video, I am going to be going into Photoshop and showing you this photo and then I'll go back to Lightroom and do the other photo. But usually I like to do stuff in a batch, so I'll do about five on Lightroom and then move them all into Photoshop. You choose what you want to do. But let's just open up Photoshop and then we'll get started from there. Alright, so once you load up Photoshop, right here, so sometimes I don't do much in Photoshop, sometimes it actually is just mainly just me putting it in the size for Instagram, and of course, this is an Instagram tutorial basically, so I am going to show you what your ratio, your uh, frame size should be for Instagram. So I'm going to get started on that, that means I've got less to do here because I've got quite a lot of changes to do in Photoshop. This one is predominantly Photoshop, but it's the other one I'm going to be doing will be predominantly Lightroom. So let's just jump in here so you see all your tools at the side. They all have a good meaning, but the one you're going to want to use right now is you're going to, want to use the crop tool, which is this one right here. Let's put that in. I've already decided to make the right ones here but you've got instagram landscape instagram portrait instagram square instagram stories or you can make a youtube thumbnail come on from my website right there portrait is the one i tend to go for 1080 by 1350 and you just gradually move it to where you'd like it so i pref i prefer usually when it comes to this i don't like too much sky in my image i think that just looks over the top so usually if it's a lot of sky in the photo, I tend to work my way down the way and work more with the grass or the ground, whatever ground it is, in this circumstance being grass. Firstly, I want to get working on trying to remove this. All of this nasty stuff that I do not like in my, vid in my photo. And that could be the same with anything, it doesn't have to be this if you don't want any people in it. There is like a, a random squirrel that's just running to your throat and you don't like it. Just, you can take it away doing these simple steps. So I'm going to show you this. So these are the ten of tools you're going to be wanting to work with. I'm going to be working with the spot heel and brush, this one right here. And you're also going to be wanting to work with the clone stamp, this one right here. So I'm going to show you how to do both of them. So firstly let's work with this spot heel and brush, this lovely one. So this, what, what this does is you hold to the left, click in, and you just go over it like that. That's an easy V shape. Watch this. But as you see, it doesn't look very good. But as you see, it's like tried to like blend it in to the photos near about it. So we just, just zoom in, go back in it, go over it slightly. And we're going to do this until we've got none of the chain there, so I'll see you in just a second. Much to get this box away, much to get all these little stuff away. As you see, it does not look good just yet. There's still a lot of problems with this photo. Uh, as I never had these there, the grass went over the top of the runway. Don't be scared, don't fret when this happens guys. There is an easy fix to this. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Let me go with it, that's fine. That's cool. Okay, so the way you're going to do this is you're going to have to press ALT, when you get the clone stamp on, press ALT, and what this does is it chooses a colour. So, you try to work basically around the same kind of colours as what's nearby, because then it's natural, it goes together. So I'm going to go, boom, click that colour, and what's going to do is basically, I'm now going to hover this and basically going to colour in that colour you clicked on all the way down. So watch this, like that. And this could take a while, 
but already it's starting to look better if it goes a bit wrong just press alt move it back up again as you see already you're starting to see an improvement up at the top of my photo so i'm going to go around and do all that so let's get the speed on So now let's work on the grass. So this never happened to me the last time I done this, but the runway has decided to go bonkers. So let's just run our hands through that, just slowly, nicely go over the grass. Oops. And we've got ourselves a nice set of grass. So I'm going to leave the grass, the grass is actually looking pretty sweet. So basically all I've got to do for this photo is I'm now going to whack on a sky replacement. So in the new update for Photoshop, they added an easier way to change the sky. And that is called the sky replacement tool. So you just click edit, go down, sky replacement tool right here and just click away. Also you can actually change stuff, you can shift the edge, fade the edge. Don't need to do that right there, you can scale it. What I've done though is I try to make it a little bit darker to match the feel of the foreground. As you see the control tower, a bit dark. And there we go. Do you think this photo looks similar to the first one? As you see it's a little bit more moody than the first time I went around doing this. But I have to say I've done a pretty good job of trying to match up the way i done it the first time. And I think that if I was going to make this photo again and again and again. I think they would always turn out the same way. That's my style, that's the way I would like the photo to turn out. So once you've finished up with that, you just save, save on your computer or you can save in the cloud, up to you. I guess putting, a, putting planes in the cloud would work. If you have edited a photo via Lightroom and Photoshop after watching this tutorial, please tag me in the photo. I would share it on my account and I would love to to see how uh, how well you've done. For the purpose of this video you can see that just doing little things here and there on different platforms eventually you've got an Instagram worthy photo. Let's move on to the next one. Alright so the next one is a um, photo I took not that long ago actually just at the end of 2020 when I went out to Edinburgh for a little trip. Edinburgh is the perfect city to go and test out photography skills. That's a recommendation from me. And I went out and there's been a photo I've always wanted to do of Scott Monument, which is the one you're seeing right there right now. This before photo, I've always wanted to stand there in between the cars. I got some weird looks from drivers going past, like what the heck are you up to? I wouldn't have been able to say that my Instagram predictions of 2021 was to hit 1000 likes on any of my photos, Honestly, you guys are tremendous and I have to thank you all for that. But if you want to see how I came about making my most popular Instagram photo, well, here we go. I remember what I used for this one, so just right back into Lightroom, put it up, and then deal with the presets. I used HD Sunset. It's already doing the work, as you see, it's already doing the work. This can fool a lot of people. A lot of people are probably like, that is a brilliant sunset shot. I took this at about 11am. Nowhere near sunset time, but the preset done the job. I never liked the the sun hitting the Scott Monument like that. I feel like the Scott Monument is the subject, that's what you're trying to take a photo of, but I was too blinded by that ray of sun. And I was like, that's not where I want that to be. So when I'm done, this is where I'm going to get to the graduated filter. So this one basically deals with the sky. You predominantly use this on sky. What you do is you can just throw it in. These I've already got ones because the presets used them. So I'm going to click this one, I think it is. And as you see, it's basically the line. So they've dealt with thirds, they've dealt with this as a portion, dealt with this as a portion, dealt with this as a portion. But I want to move this one down. I'm not a big fan of it being right there and blinding the most important part of the image. Move it down like that. What I'm going to do is now that I'm 
clicked onto that graduated filter, I'm now going to lower the exposure on it. Now, because everything is working on the outside of this, which is all you can do for this one, I'm going to make the texture nice and smooth. Boom, boom, boom. I thought the sky looked lovely for this. And I'm going to add my own. So I'm going to do that. And my own, as you see, this is what it does. You see, the, the line's it. And I'm going to angle it so it's aiming down on the bit I'm not a big fan of. I'm going to make this a little bit darker, but not a lot. Some contrast would work. Maybe take away the shadow. There we go. I think that's looking dandy. And I'm going to also use one of these radial fillers. I'm going to edit the one they've already got there. I'm going to bring that shadow in. I'm going to bring the texture in, clarity right up. So as you see, that is already looking quite similar to the way I'd like it. But I think it's still a bit overexposed. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. And boom, I think that is looking pretty sweet. I think I'm just going to deal with the skies. I think the skies are not looking that nice right now. I'm going to click that. Ah, uh, yeah, so the sky, I'm still not a big fan of it. So, what I'm going to do is going to export. That is basically me done in Lightroom there. Export, and let's see you in Photoshop. Right, so now that we're in here. As you see, the sky, I'm still not a big fan of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit sky replacement. As you see, that was rather sweet. But final thing, boom, keep on portrait. And I quite like it in the center right there. And there we go. That is the photo, my most popular photo. And this is what it looks like before, what it looked like after Lightroom what it looks like now. Look at that. I'm so happy with the way that turned out for the second time. It's I am again really happy with the way it turned out. If you do want to spend a little bit longer, you can try to maybe edit the people out, edit the car out. But I decided just to leave it the way it is. Show the vibrant hustle and bustle of Princess Street. Anyways, if you did enjoy this tutorial, if you did think it was motivational, inspirational and, and brought all of that positivity, then guys, please drop a like. Tell me that i done my job here today. Comment and let me know and tag me on social media on your own photos if you did go along with this tutorial. Tell me if it really did help. And subscribe if you do want to see more tutorials and some of my videos. I'm also into videography. So do all that great stuff guys and I will see you on Instagram. I'll see you next week for another video. Don't know what that will be but anyways. Peace out, have a good day guys, I'll see you all later, bye!